Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is part two of my mini-series on concert photography. In this part, we're going to talk about equipment and settings. Now, the most efficient way for me to talk about equipment and settings is to reference the equipment that I use. Please don't take this as an advertisement for my equipment. I'm not suggesting you need to run out and buy the exact same camera and lens I do. Just use this information, apply it to the equipment that you use or as guidelines for equipment you're thinking of purchasing. Okay, cameras. Now, when I was a concert photographer in the past, I was a 35 millimeter shooter and I used an SLR. Now, I'm getting into it again and I see that most photographers use DSLRs, but there are some photographers that are beginning to use mirrorless cameras. And that's the route I chose to go for my concert photography. Mirrorless cameras, for me, they're just lighter and easier to handle in the pit. And uh, the cameras that I choose to use are Fujifilm cameras. And I have two right here. Um, I have the X-T1, which is actually my camera that I use all the time and I have one that was loaned to me by B&H Photo. It's a Fujifilm X-Pro2 and the advantages for me for using these cameras are as I mentioned they're lightweight and very easy to handle. Also I like them because they have these discrete knobs so that I could easily and quickly change aperture, shutter speed, ISO, or um, exposure compensation just right on top of the camera. And the X-Pro2 is very similar. It has ISO, shutter speed, um, and it has um, exposure compensation. It, of course, the Fuji X-Series lenses have an aperture ring, so you could quickly change aperture. So I really like using these cameras. Uh, they kind of fit the bill for what I want to do. You have to remember that when you're in the pit, first of all, sometimes it's very crowded. There's a lot of photographers kind of moving around, jockeying for position. Many of them use more than one camera. They'll have two cameras or they'll have a camera and um, a shooting bag with them with lenses in it. So they're kind of bulky. They're taking up a lot of room, moving around. For me, it's just easier using these small cameras and they seem to perform just as well as a DSLR. And in the case of these Fujis, they focus very, very quickly and that's important uh, when you're in the pit. So my guidelines for you when you're looking for a camera system, look for something that is relatively uh, easy to use, meaning that you could quickly and efficiently adjust the settings on the camera so that when you're in the pit, if you find that you have to up ISO, have to change your um, shutter speed or aperture or anything like that, that you could do it very, very quickly. Because as I mentioned in, in episode one, you're usually just allowed to be in the pit for the first three songs. So it's not a lot of time in the pit and you have to make sure you capture all the shots you need to capture as quickly and as efficiently as you can. Okay, let's talk about lenses. Uh, in my opinion, the most important factor for a lens is the speed of the lens. You're going to need really fast glass. Uh, the venues are usually dark. Uh, you're going to need lenses that really could open up as wide as possible. The slowest glass I'll use is f2.8. And usually the focal length you'd like to cover is one lens that will cover a full frame equivalent of 24 to 70. And for that, on my Fujifilm crop sensor cameras, I use this uh, Fujifilm 16 to 55, and that will cover that uh, focal length 24 to 70. Next, you'll need a lens that will cover the focal length 70 to 200. And for that, I use this Fujifilm 50 to 140, so that's roughly gonna give me that coverage. Between these two lenses, I could just about shoot any concert. Now, for a small club, small stage, you probably could get away with just this one lens, the 16 to 55, or if you're using a full frame camera, it would be a 24 to 70 equivalent type lens. That will work out great. 
If you're in a big venue, big stage, deep stage, you're going to need that 70 to 200 equivalent lens. And again, they have to be very fast lenses, f2.8. Image stabilization will help, but I don't find that it's absolutely necessary. That might differ for you if you can't hold the camera steady enough on slower shutter speeds. Uh, you may need image stabilization. Um, but to me, it's not an absolute requirement like the speed of the lens is. So those are the two lenses you'll find you'll use the most. Personally, I don't use a super wide angle lens, but I do know a few photographers that use like a 14 to maybe a 16 millimeter fixed focal length super wide angle lens and they like to get a shot of pretty much the, as much of the stage as possible I guess with that lens. Um, as I mentioned I never use one. I don't like switching lenses a lot so and I don't like carrying a lot so that's me. Uh, a lot of guys will carry a full camera bag with various lenses and things like that. Um, I just that's just not something I like to do so I tend to keep these two lenses um, if I use one camera, I'll have a small bag with the second lens in it. And if I'm using two cameras, I'll just have neck straps with both cameras on it, with one lens on one camera and the other lens on the other camera. And speaking of straps, you can see I have wrist straps on these cameras. For concert photography, wrist straps aren't pro are probably aren't the best choice. You would uh, prefer probably to have either a shoulder sling or a neck strap because if you have one camera you have to change lenses and it's easier to change the lens if the camera is hanging on the strap around your neck or over your shoulder. If it's on your wrist it's more difficult to change the lens, get the other lens and switch uh, lenses. So it's just more efficient if the camera's on some type of neck strap. Um, I don't own one but I know they sell harnesses now where you could have two cameras on shoulder harnesses and that would be the ultimate way. You'd have two cameras with two different lenses and one on each hip basically and you could switch between the cameras very quickly. Okay, next we're going to talk about uh, the ISO performance of the camera. In my opinion, you need a camera that has really good high ISO performance. Typically, as I mentioned a bazillion times, the venues are dark and you're going to have your ISO elevated quite high. Often it's going to be at least 3,200, sometimes 6,400. There's a little dive bar here in Buffalo that I photograph at a lot and it is the darkest club in the world and I'm at 12,800 there and I still have a slow shutter speed at 12,800. So the ISO performance of your camera is very important. Um, so I, that's why, again, I like these Fujis. They have great high ISO performance and they just work out great for that regard. Okay, next we'll talk about shooting mode, sometimes called camera mode. Um, most of the time in a, I'm in aperture priority mode and some of the time I'm in manual mode. And the way I'll go in is I'll, I'll put my camera in aperture priority mode and I open the lens all the way to 2.8 right away. Um, as soon as the venue darkens down a little bit before the band actually comes on stage, I'll take a couple test shots to see where I should put my ISO. As I mentioned, I usually will start out around 3200 and take some test shots and see what my shutter speed ends up being. I like my shutter speed to be at least 1 1 25th of a second. I will accept it if it's slower, but you know, because usually you have no choice. But I like it to be at least 1 1 25th of a second, and preferably I'd like it to be even faster, 1 2 50th of a second. Now there are times you might want to do something artistic and have some blur on the stage, or have you know, the arms of the drummer blurring and you're going to use a slower shutter speed. But on the whole, you would prefer to use a faster shutter speed, and that's why high ISO performance is important because you're really going to be bumping up that ISO to achieve those shutter speeds. Now sometimes I will be in manual mode and I'll talk about that more in a minute. Um, usually I do shoot at least several shots let's say in manual mode and um, again that's why I like the Fujis. It's easy enough to switch modes. The dials are right there. I don't have to hold in a button turn a thumb wheel you know to change modes or anything like that it's very easy to do so on your camera 
if you don't have that luxury, just become very efficient at it so that you could easily and quickly change the modes of your camera, change the aperture of your camera, change the uh, ISO of your camera, and you should be good to go. All right, I do know a few concert photographers that use auto ISO. Preferably, I don't like to use it. Um, it just adds another unknown in the equation. When you're shooting, if you're in aperture priority mode, you're really not sure what your shutter speed will be. And if you're in auto ISO, you're probably not going to be sure what your ISO is going to be either. I prefer to have as least the least number of unknowns as possible. So I will physically set my ISO all the time. I never use auto ISO. If you're just starting out at concert photography or you're new at low light photography, you might want to um, to make sure you get some shots, some decent shots, is to use auto ISO. But it's not for me. It's just not for me. That's what I'll say. I know, uh, still, I do know a few photographers that use it and they take great pictures. Next, I will talk about ISO and shutter speed. Since I really keep my lenses at 2.8 all the time, those are the only other two variables I have to think about. And what I'll do is when I'm shooting is I'm always taking a note as I'm shooting at what my shutter speed is on each shot I took. I don't chimp the shot, I just make sure I'm paying attention as I'm pressing in the shutter what the shutter speed says at the bottom of my frame or through my viewfinder. So I know that I'm shooting at an adequate shutter speed. If the shutter speed I feel is too slow, I will then just keep boosting my ISO till I get a shutter speed that I'm happy with. Um, quite often, I then will go into manual mode. And the reason why I sometimes like manual mode is you gotta remember when you're in any type of auto mode on your uh, camera, whether it's um, you know uh, aperture priority, shutter priority, um, full auto, anything like that. Your camera, when it's um, uh, measuring a scene, it's gonna always try to bring the average brightness to middle gray. So a concert really isn't like that usually. There's some very bright lights, there's some very dark times during the stage show, and sometimes I like to reflect that. So I like to reflect the singer, you know, singing, at the mic with a small spotlight just illuminating his face and the rest of the stage is black. And to do that, I sometimes will go into manual mode. Then I could be taking these shots, then maybe the stage lights come on and you know illuminates everything. And if you're in the crowd watching it, all of a sudden you're stunned by this bright light. Well, I'm in manual mode and I'm not changing anything, then everything is now bright. So. Sometimes that works. I'm not saying all the time. So that's why I will probably 80 to 90% of the time be in aperture priority mode. If I'm sure I got all the shots I really wanted to get, let's say I'm into the third song now, I'll then switch to, to manual mode and do some shooting like that. Now that's just me. I don't know a lot of photographers to do that. I do know a few, but um, well, I do know one other, let's put it that way that does that. Uh, so it's really up to you if you want to experiment with manual mode. But always be conscious of the relationship um, when you're in aperture priority mode and you're always keeping your aperture at 2.8, the relationship uh, as you're shooting you have between your ISO and the shutter speed. Okay, I alluded to metering a minute ago, and typically I will keep my uh, cameras in spot metering mode, in single point focus mode. What I like to do is I keep the focus point right in the center. I don't move the focus point around because I'm often moving around in the pit and I'm taking pictures of different musicians, and I don't always, you know, perhaps have the, you know, guitar player more to the side the headstock of his guitar going off to the other side so I have the focus point over that way. I just don't do it that way. Um, so what I do is I keep the focus point in the middle and I will focus with back button focus on the cameras on the artist eye and right then I'll have to press the shutter. I have my camera set up so when I have to press the shutter 
it'll take um, an exposure reading and lock the exposure as long as I hold the shutter halfway in. So I quickly focus on the performer's eye and half press the shutter to gain the exposure because I want usually their face to be properly exposed. Uh, after I do that, I just will quickly recompose and push the shutter the rest of the way in to take the picture. Now, like in a studio setting, I typically won't recompose, meaning if I have a model in front of the backdrop, I don't focus on his or her eye, you know, and then recompose. I will actually move the focus point in that instance. So if you watch other videos and I talk about moving the focus point, it depends on what situation I'm in. In a concert, I don't move the focus point around. I leave it in the middle and I focus, then I hold the shutter button in halfway. I focus with the back button and then I hold the shutter button in halfway to lock in exposure. I recompose, take the shot. And I, you could do that very quickly. Okay, I have the camera set up on high speed continuous. Um, because quite often you want to cut, you don't just want to see the you know guitar player playing or the singer just singing, looking at the crowd. You want to catch some type of emotion or some type of expression, and you know you you can't always do that instantaneously. Meaning they, it might be very fleeting. So you really compose the shot, focus the shot, whatever you knew, you know, however you work it, you have the shot press the shutter in and fire off a burst of images. Uh, most of the, most, most, or both of these cameras really could take a lot of shots. They have big buffers, the buffers don't fill. Now I don't just hold it down and machine gun off 100 shots either. I will do short bursts of maybe five or six shots. Um, you know, I wait till, usually, you know, you could tell because you're listening to the music, the music might reach a crescendo and you're going to anticipate that the artist is going to do something at that moment a little different than what they're doing prior to that moment. So you could anticipate it and then fire off a few shots just prior and after. And usually you'll get a good expression, um, something, something a little different. And that's what you're really going for. Okay, I shoot raw exclusively, and I strongly suggest that you do too. The reason being is raw gives you a lot more latitude, especially in exposure. And as I mentioned a zillion times, the venues are dark, but they sometimes could get very bright with lights. So you're gonna have a big, wide, dynamic range. So if you shoot raw, it's a little more forgiving. So if you're underexposed a little bit in this shot, you'll have enough latitude in you know, the exposure slider to make up for it. And likewise, if you're you know, the opposite on another shot, you could bring it the other way. So uh, definitely, if you don't shoot raw, shoot raw, learn how to process raw images, and uh, you'll find that you'll um, have more keepers overall because you're shooting raw. Okay, types of images to shoot. Of course, if it's a band, you want to try to capture every single member in the band. Um, then you might want to try to get some shots with multiple members in the band. Depends how big the stage is, how big the pit is. If you're using that super wide angle lens, maybe you could get the entire band in a shot. Otherwise, maybe you could get like uh, the bass player with the singer, with the guitar player at the other side in a, in a row. You could get maybe the singer with the drummer behind them or a guitar player with the drummer behind them and things like that. So you could get some combinations of musicians. So, you know, make sure you capture everyone. Um, if you re hopefully really know the music, you might know a part where there's going to be a guitar solo. So you could get in front of the lead guitar player so that you could get him reacting as he or she, or I should say, are playing the guitar. Um, likewise, if there's a bass passage, you get the bass player. If there's a part where you know the drummer is, um, you know, more animated in a certain part of the song, you could capture the drummer during that. So it does help if you know the music of the artist that is performing. Um, also some guidelines. They're not really rules. They're, these are just guidelines that I found more in the past when I was actually uh, shooting film and whatnot, and what some magazines told me not to do. 
and what to do. And the main thing was that most of them never wanted a performer with the microphone like they're eating it. So you don't want to be right in front of the singer with the microphone right in front of their face. Uh, of course, they're going to be most often singing in the microphone, so you, you'd prefer to get that shot from the side um, so the microphone isn't covering their face at all. Now, if you get a great expression and you happen to have the microphone in their, front of their face, but it's really a great expression, you know, that's a good shot still. It's, that's why I say these are just guidelines. The other guideline is you don't want to cut off the headstock of a guitar or a bass. Now again, that's a guideline. If you have a great shot of the guitar player and you cut off the top of his Fender guitar, don't worry about it. It's, it's still a great shot. And it's, it, again, these are just guidelines and things that you should try to avoid doing, I guess, if possible. Um, and, you know, but overall, you really want to go for the emotion and the um, excitement that the band is exuding and try to capture that um, with your photography. Okay, that's it on this uh, part of my three-part mini-series on concert photography. Again, these are just guidelines, things that work for me. Um, there are more than one way to do this, um, but you know, take what works for you from what I said and apply things that you think might work for you, and then you'll really um, excel at concert photography. All right, until part three, Talk to you guys soon.